Hello my dear students. In today's video we will learn dimensions and dimensional analysis. Next we will study a very important portion from our chapter dimensions and dimensional analysis. What is meant by dimensions? The dimensions of a physical quantity are the powers to which the fundamental quantities mass, length, time, temperature and electric current are to be raised in order to represent the physical quantity. That means uh, usually in mechanics we have uh, three base quantities that is mass, uh, length and time. When we take uh, electricity there is uh, current we use as a dimensional physical quantity, a physical quantity which has dimension electric current. And uh, in uh, thermodynamics and um, thermal uh, properties when we study uh, temperature we take as uh, physical quantity which has dimension. So uh, the dimensions of a physical quantity are the powers or exponents to which the quantities are raised to represent that quantity. That means if you are taking uh, area for example we have area area means it is length into breadth we are taking so length and breadth both are measured in uh, as a distance so length has a dimension l breadth also has a dimension of l so areas uh, dimensional formula is l square so this two uh, is called actually the dimension that means uh, it is raised to power. So that quantity is known as the dimension. The dimension of a physical quantity are the powers or ex exponents to which the quantities are raised to represent that quantity. Areas dimensional formula is L square. In that that 2 is the dimension. Now dimensional formula means is the expression which shows how and which of the base quantities represents the dimension of a physical quantity. For example, if you take speed speed is equal to distance by time. So we know that distance is measured uh, as a length. So the dimension of uh, length is L and time is represented as T. We have to put a square bracket when we write dimension. So it is L T raised to minus 1. That is L raised to 1, T raised to minus 1. Now you take uh, another quantity uh, density. If you take density, it is mass divided by volume. So what will we write? Mass is m and volume is uh, length into breadth into thickness. So it is three length measurements. So what will we write is L cube. So it will be linearly written as m raised to 1 L raised to minus 3. So like this is uh, we find the dimensional formula. So m raised to 1, l raised to minus 3 is said to be the dens uh, density's dimensional formula. Similarly, speed has a dimensional formula l raised to 1, t raised to minus 1. So like this we can find for any uh, physical quantity we can find out the dimension. Now dimensional equation means an equation obtained by equating a physical quantity with its dimensional formula. So this can also be density, uh, dimension of density if you write uh, d is equal to or rho is equal to uh, m raised to 1, l raised to minus 3, t raised to 0. This is called a dimensional equation as well. Dimensional analysis uh, has some applications. The first application is checking the correctness of the equation. We can uh, check the correctness of a very familiar equation which is kinetic energy is equal to half mv square. Whether this equation is correct or not, we can check. So if an equation has to be correct, its LHS dimension should be equal to the dimensions on the RHS. So we are going to find out first LHS. What is LHS uh, dimension? Uh, LHS is kinetic energy. Energy means it is work done. So work done is equal to force into displacement. Now force is mass into acceleration into displacement. So if you don't know what is acceleration's dimension, you should write first. Uh, it has L, uh, acceleration is equal to velocity by time. 
so some of you may not be knowing velocity's dimension so you have to find that as well so velocity is equal to d by t d is measured in length t is measured in as t so the dimension of velocity is l t raised to minus 1 so acceleration's dimension will be l t raised to minus 1 by t which is l t raised to minus 2 now when we go back to the equation of energy that is m a into d uh, energy's dimension becomes mass acceleration into distance which is m l square t raised to minus 2 now we will find out the rhs dimension RHS dimension when you check, RHS term is half mv square, but half is a constant which doesn't have dimensions. The dimension of RHS, RHS dimension is uh, that of mv square's dimension because half is a constant, it doesn't have dimension. So, we'll write only mv square's dimension that is m into velocity square. Velocity square is lt raised to minus 1 the whole square. So, it is m l square t raised to minus 2. So, what we got is RHS and LHS have the same dimensional formula. That means, if this equation kinetic energy is equal to half mv square is uh, dimensionally correct. Why we say dimensionally correct is because this constant over here half we couldn't evaluate with the help of this method. So, uh, that is one of the drawback of dimensional uh, anal dimensional method of analyzing these equations constants are there in the equation means you we cannot evaluate the constant whether it is there or not or what is the number over there that we cannot find out with this method next application of dimensional analysis is deducing the relation among the physical quantities that we can uh, check how we will do with the example given here the period of simple pendulum may depend on the mass of the pendulum its length acceleration due to gravity and angle of swing hence find the relation for the time period of the pendulum so here the information given are the time period of pendulum may depend on so means uh, the value you have to find is the time period it may depend on certain factors is given mass uh, then length, acceleration uh, due to gravity and angle of swing. So, we don't know whether it depends or not that we have to check and find out and how it is uh, related also we can find out with this method. So, here we will write the time period, uh, we will take time, the physical quantity time is depending on uh, certain factors like mass it is given, then it is given length then acceleration due to gravity g and angle of swing theta now let us imagine mass is a times length is b times acceleration due to gravity is c times and theta is d times um, raised to power or uh, that are the dimensions of each of these physical quantities let us imagine like that this is the first step now in the next step you should take the uh, dimension or before that we can do one thing we can uh, write this as an equal to equation like this is a relation this will be an equation so we'll put a constant k then we will write m raised to a l raised to b g raised to c and theta raised to d now we'll take uh, the second step that is second step is we will write the dimensions on both sides dimensions on both sides of the equation we have, we have to write. So, what is the dimension of time period? It is t. So, its m is 0, l is also 0. So, this is the dimension on right, left side. k does not have a dimension because it is a constant. Now, mass has a dimension, it is given m raised to a. This is L length, it is raised to B. G is acceleration due to gravity. So, acceleration has a dimension L t raised to minus 2. So, we will write L t raised to minus 2 raised to C. And angle does not have any dimension. So, we will not write that. Now, 
what we have to do is we will uh, distribute this power over here that is m raised to a l raised to b l raised to c and t raised to minus 2c that we will uh, simplify and write m raised to a l raised to b plus c because uh, l has b as power l has c as power then t raised to minus 2c after this we will uh, do our third step of the um, third step in this method that is we will compare the physical quantities on right and left so that comparison we have to do the comparison on LHS dimensions with that of RHS dimension so what you can see is mass is uh, raised to power a over here here the mass is raised to 0 so a is equal to 0 we can write L is raised to b plus c b plus c but here l is 0 so we will write b plus c is 0 b is equal to minus c now t raised to minus 2c here t is 1 so uh, minus 2c is equal to 1 or c is equal to we get minus half now b what will be b minus of c is b so minus of minus so it will be plus half so we got all the values a b and c we got now we will go back to the equation 2 equation 2 says uh, t is equal to so we will write capital t over here because that represents the uh, time period time period is equal to k into m raised to a m raised to a is m raised to 0 l raised to b b is half l raised to half and g raised to c g raised to c g raised to minus half now we write it as m raised to 0 is 1 so t is equal to k into root l divided by root g because raised to half is square root raised to minus half is 1 by square root of that so t is equal to k into root l by g by experiments this value of k is evaluated that is found to be 2 pi so the uh, time period of symbol pendulum is 2 pi root of L by G. This is how we find out the uh, relation among the physical quantities. So from here, even though we have taken mass and anglo swing, uh, it is found to be uh, in at the end of the equation, we found that they both are not depending. The time period are not the time period of the pendulum is not depending on the mass of the bob or the angle of swing it depends only on the length of the pendulum and acceleration due to gravity at that place now the third uh, use of the dimensional analysis is converting one system of unit to another this also we will do with an example so here convert one joule to erg is given you know that joule is a unit of work or energy uh, it's that is a joule is an SI system a unit in SI system erg is a unit in CGS so what we are going to do is we are going to convert as an SI system to a CGS system so first of all we should understand that in which uh, unit conversion we are doing so we are converting SI system to CGS the physical quantity is uh, physical quantity we are converting is energy energy so here uh, energy is dimensional formula we will write energy is dimensional formula first it is ml square t raised to minus 2 m raised to 1 l raised to 2 t raised to minus 2 now uh, we will write like this this is uh, how we represent n1 times of m1 raised to a L1 raised to B, T1 raised to C is N2 times M1, M2 raised to A, L2 raised to B, T2 raised to C. Here, what is N1? N1 means it is 1 joule given. That is N1, the suffix 1 over here represents the SI system, the first system. And the suffix 2 uh, terms over here represents the second system you are converting that value to that is the CGS so this is SI system and this is the CGS system 
So N1 is 1 here. We don't know what is N2 because convert 1 joule to erg only they told you. So we don't know what is how uh, that erg value over here. N2 we don't know. So what will you do? It is uh, N2 is equal to that is what we have to find out. N1 into M1 by M2 raised to A. L1 by L2 raised to B. T1 by T2 raised to C. Now N1 is 1. What is M1? M1 is the mass in SI system. That is standard is 1 kilogram. M2 is the mass in CGS system. So that is 1 gram. Raised to A. A is what here? The physical quantity is energy. So A is uh, 1 here. Mass has a raised to power 1. So that we will give. Now L1 by L2. L1 is again SI system only. So that is 1 meter. L2 CGS 1 centimeter. In energy's equation L has a dimension 2. So we will write 2. T1 by T2. That is 1 second divided by 1 second. Dimension is minus 2. Now we will convert the units into any single uh, kind. That is, uh, we will do this as 1000 gram by 1 gram raised to 1. This is 100 centimeter by 1 centimeter raised to 2. 1 second by 1 second get cancelled. So, 1 raised to minus 2 is 1 itself. So, you can see here this gram get cancelled, centimeter get cancelled. So, it is 1000 into 10 raised to 4. 100 square is 10 raised to 4. So, that is 10 raised to 3 into 10 raised to 4 which is 10 raised to 7. So, 1 uh, joule is equal to 10 raised to 7 erg we got. So, that is how we convert uh, one system of unit to another system of unit. The numericals we saw that some places we were not able to put the values. Uh, in dimensional method. So, that, that is the main limitation of the dimensional analysis. First one, we cannot derive the formula involving trigonometric, exponential or log functions which have, which have no dimensions. Now, it does not give any information regarding the constants. We saw in the equation kinetic energy is equal to half mv square that half we were not able to find out by the method of dimension. So, that is what it says. It does not give any information regarding the constants in the formula. We will not be able to find the exact sign plus or minus that connects the terms in the equation. If there are uh, two terms in an equation, we will not be able to find the sign of that particular uh, connecting uh, terms. Then this method fails to derive equations which has more than three physical quantities. Usually in mechanics, if there are more than three physical quantities are involved, in that case it will be difficult to find out. We cannot find out the uh, equations, derive the equations using this method.